So I'm Robert Lettler and I have two roles at King's. One is as Vice President for the Health Faculties, so I oversee the four health faculties of the University. And secondly, I'm the Executive Director of King's Health Partners, our academic health sciences centre that brings three foundation trusts in the University into close partnership to accelerate translation of research into patient benefit. So our healthcare system, indeed healthcare system in many systems in many countries around the world, are facing a series of really, really big challenges. Um, the first is that the demographics of the populations that we serve are getting ever more demanding because they're aging, and so we're looking after more and more people with multiple long-term conditions, and that poses a huge burden on the healthcare system. The second is that medical advances tend to cost more money. Uh, so whenever new drugs come on the scene, they tend to be expensive. Uh, and so patient expectations are very high, the burden of disease is very great, the elderly population is getting uh, ever more demanding. So in that context, if we just carry on doing more of the same, then we're going to have an unsustainable system that won't deliver the improved outcomes that the very exciting advances in medical science are making available to us but in order to access them we need to have an affordable healthcare system in which to adopt them. So we're having a really exciting time in terms of innovation at King's and within King's Health Partners. There's a whole range of kinds of innovation and we need a whole range. So to give you a couple of examples, um, there's a program called Tahiti which is an innovative way of accessing imaging so that we can accelerate the diagnosis of some diseases that need to be diagnosed fast, like cancer. And so this is cutting out many of the steps that lead to delayed diagnosis so that a GP can refer a patient directly for a CT scan or an MR scan without waiting for a consultant appointment and, and, and. So the use of imaging to accelerate diagnosis is a very simple innovation. It doesn't require anything new. It requires us to change the ways that we work. In terms of a more high-tech innovation, then um, ro robotic guided cardiac ablation. So this is, you've got, you've got an arrhythmia in your heart, uh, which is life-threatening. Uh, being able to guide this robotically to put a catheter into the heart and deal with the electric node that's causing the, the arrhythmia, that is the sort of innovation that is also happening at St. Thomas's. It does involve imaging again, but this is a really high-tech innovation that gr greatly improves patient outcomes. So London is one of the world's greatest cities and it should be one of the world's biomedical capitals because of the assets that we have relevant to innovations in healthcare. So we have three of the world's top 20 universities. We have a lot of leading hospitals that are internationally renowned. We've got institutes like the Francis Crick Institute. We've got regulators of healthcare uh, uh, research and so on and so on. Uh, and what is happening now, which is really exciting, is that we're beginning now to work collaboratively as opposed to competitively. And so the three academic health sciences centres in London that are based on Imperial University College and King's are now working together closely. We meet regularly and that has led to the birth of an agency called MedCity which is there to attract companies to come in and work with uh, the research that's going on in the universities and the hospitals in order to accelerate translation. I think it's crucial that our health faculty students engage with entrepreneurship because uh, new ideas are essential to improving healthcare delivery, uh, new medicines, new technologies, new devices, new apps. Uh, and there's so much energy and so much imagination in our student population that we need to unleash that in entrepreneurship uh, and engagement with the Entrepreneurship Institute. My name is Bruce Keir. I'm the National Medical Director. So innovation is not just important, it's essential. Because every healthcare system in the world is gripped in this quadruple pincer of rapidly rising demand, escalating costs, changing public and professional expectations, and frankly, not enough money to handle all of those issues. So if we're going to maintain the quality of care that our patients deserve, then the thing that links our ability to maintain quality and meet the rising demand is innovation. And by innovation, I mean doing things in different ways. Innovation isn't just about robots, nanotechnology, and fancy gizmos. It's about doing things differently. It's about the elimination of waste focus on the appropriateness of care, redesign of pathways. 
And that's why everybody can play their part in innovation, because our NHS has 1.2, 1.3 million employees, and the intellectual capital for, us, for finding the solution to this really difficult equation lies in the minds of the people working in the service. I don't just support young entrepreneurs, I support the young generation in, in the totality of the NHS. You know, junior doctors move from hospital to hospital, nurses move from ward to ward in those hospitals, and they have something really unique because they see where all the good things are and they see where all the bad things lurk. And if organizations were to listen to the younger generation who see these things, then we could go a long way into transforming those people into our very real agents for change in the health service. So that's why I value the younger generation. But there's a more important issue. Within that generation is a subset of people who are just natural entrepreneurs, who think outside the box, who want to do things differently. And historically, we've just ignored that kind of intellectual capital. And in my view, we do that at our peril now, um, because we really need new innovations, entrepreneurial people to address the problems that we have, which are getting tougher and tougher. So by promoting entrepreneurialism and encouraging people to think outside the box, develop new technologies, develop new ways of doing things, we're not only helping them by making their jobs more interesting, we're helping our patients, and just as importantly, we're helping the economy if their endeavors turn into economically viable um, endeavors. My name is Pankaj Chandak. I'm a transplant surgical registrar and a research fellow here at King's. So one of the innovations that we're, uh, that we're developing and, uh, well, have developed really, is the use of 3D printing um, in the use of complex paediatric renal transplantation. So this is where we use 3D printing to um, essentially create a model of an adult kidney, which could be either from mum or dad, and how we use that to implant it into a 3D printed model um, of the baby's abdomen. And by small, I mean less than 15 kilograms or so. So I was at St. Thomas's one day and my boss said to me, Mr. Kassara said to me, there's a lecture on 3D printing and I never heard of the concept of 3D printing. He said, well, if you're there, why don't you just pop along and have a look? So I did. And um, that's where I met my colleague, uh, Nick Byrne, um, who's a medical physicist over at uh, Gaza St. Thomas's. And, um, and then he was talking about 3D printing for heart surgery. So that's when I thought, actually, hold on, if they're doing it for cardiac surgery, why don't we try and do it for some of our very small children um, when we're trying to use it for organ transplantation? And that's how it was set up, purely by chance. So I approached him and he said, OK, we'll, we'll, we'll give it a go. So uh, we did a, a retrospective case first as a proof of concept, and then we translated it into the operating theatre um, within four months from the idea, which was uh, really, really uh, quite, you know, well, it was quite quick for us, but, uh, but it was great, yeah. Yes, I mean, I qualified from here. King's, I feel, is like a home, you know, really. Um, I did my training here as a doctor as well. Um, and it really is one of the top universities in all aspects, not just academics, I think, but culturally as well. Um, and it's, you know, a real privilege to be a part of it. I mean, one of my heroes, Joseph Lister, um, was a professor at King's himself. Um, and he's been one of my main inspirations, um, you know, for innovation in science and surgery. So King's has really given me a lot. Um, and I've, hopefully I can contribute something as well. Yeah. Well, basically, I think the progress of knowledge and the creation of new knowledge um, is really valuable. Um, you know, for example, I remember a talk at the uh, Royal Society given by um, the, the, one of the presidents, I think, and um, he was talking about, does anyone remember from ancient Rome, ancient Greece or ancient India, um, you know, the businessmen or, you know, the, you know, the guys who make lots of money and things like this. And, um, and, and most people can't remember those names, but they can remember the composers, the scholars, the literature, you know, the, the writers, the scientists. You could name Archimedes, you could name Aristotle. Um, so, you know, creation of new knowledge is really valuable, I think. Um, so I would encourage everyone out there to become an open mind, um, to um, embrace everything, get yourself out of your comfort zone, um, and follow your instinct and if you have a gut feeling for something and um, persevere you know it's a question of perseverance and resilience really um, and, 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 and also um, networking and, and, and working with like-minded people um, who like working in a team um, as opposed to individuals with personal interest 
So it's all for the benefit of humanity, I think. Um, so yeah, go out there and win the next Nobel Prize, I think, yeah. Hi, my name is Fahim Ahmed. I'm one of the National Clinical Entrepreneur Fellows and a former GKT alumni. So the current problem isn't that, that we don't have enough health technology, but rather that we have too much of it. So Health Makes Space ensures that all these technologies are made with the clinician in mind and that we involve them in the whole process from conception to execution. Now the reason why we designed this platform was to create a community for like-minded individuals to actually find cutting-edge projects and at the same time to ensure that clinicians are rewarded for their innovation activities. So we're at a very exciting time right now. Um, it's, I'd highly encourage healthcare students and professionals to get involved in the technological revolution that is undergoing in the NHS because right now the whole future is centred around data, digital and these are two key potential saviours of our future NHS. My top tip for healthcare entrepreneurs would be to actually find out why you want to do something and that change and how is that relevant and important to you as opposed to what you're actually doing. So the Entrepreneurship Institute has provided us with a unique package of mentorship, funding opportunities, and as well as broadening our reach um, again amongst the, the student community and the wider healthcare professionals. So very grateful for the Entrepreneurship Institute for providing us with this. Hi, I'm Pahini Pandya, and I am the president of KCL Innovation Forum. So. KCLIF is a part of a larger umbrella organization, Innovation Forum, which aims at promoting entrepreneurship among scientists and health students. So we organize events which bring together scientists, policymakers, and leading industrialists, and we help them promote innovation. One of our most recent collaborations is with KCLBSA, and Health and Life Science Enterprise Committee, where we are organizing an idea workshop where people can come and brainstorm and present ideas in front of an audience. So I would say, keep a lookout. There are a lot of society across Kings which are involved in innovation, which promote entrepreneurship for health students, take part in their events, and keep um, looking at the news and sign up for their newsletters.